Are you curious to learn how to PBX work? Do you want to increase your skills to advance to another position? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to set up a 3CX PBX on your Raspberry Pi. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about setting up a 3CX PBX for your smart home. Yes, you heard me right. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytesworunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video and that's setting up a 3CX PBX on a Raspberry Pi. First, what is 3CX? We'll go over the required items, then we'll show the connectivity options, and then we'll go through an initial setup just to kind of get you up and running for a, a phone to phone or an extension situation. Well, now this video is going to be a little bit different, but it's something that I think will be very handy for you. And at the, at the least, you're going to have a better understanding of PBX. Now, what is 3CX? 3CX is one of a host of different PBXs or private branch exchanges that allow you to have multiple phones on answering potentially to the same phone number, have all sorts of features like voicemail, interphone calling things that normally only a business can have and there's been cases to where you know it's nice to have a phone especially since more of us are working from home and that's going to be something that you know it doesn't cost a lot to do this you don't rack up yet another service bill and the best of all you can do this probably with some things you've already got now in terms of required items you're going to need a raspberry pi if you've got a four, that's great, but you should be able to pull this off with a Raspberry Pi 3. Maybe a little bit slower, but if you're not running a whole lot of phones, it's probably not really going to be noticeable. You will need a copy of 3CX, and there will be information in the notes to show you how to get your own copy of that, or you can actually download it right into the Raspberry Pi and then go with the configuration from there. There is a license required for 3CX, but it's a free license because 3CX is smart enough to realize that the home environment is not going to make a lot of money. But on the other hand, they might get exposure and chances to get into some businesses if somebody's been working with this at home because there's a lot of feature functionality to it. And this is something that I think might even have some ways we can tie it into a smart home environment. And that's things I'm looking into and we'll be showing in future videos. There are some connectivity options we need to talk about because there's a lot of versatility and functionality in the 3C. So the first thing you can start off with is what's called a smartphone client. Now that can be almost any type of smartphone, whether it's Android or iOS. You can even do this with a tablet as long as it's got a microphone in it. Most of the later models do. I know it's there for Android. iOS should work as well. So that, that's two ways you can kind of get started, at least doing some extension to extension or phone to phone calling. Now, when you want to take the next step up, that's when you can look at going into what's called a SIP phone, a session initiated protocol. Those are IP based phones that are not that much more expensive than some of what you've probably already been buying for the home. And I'll even show you where we can take an old POTS phone, that's plain old telephone service, just a $20 or sometimes $15 phone you can get in Walmart and also work with this. That's something that makes this very transparent to put in. Now, to connect to the outside world, we will one way of doing this is using an ATA device and that's an analog telephone adapter so if you've already got service through UMA you name the company you've already got a device sitting there but the problem is you've got to have a way of tying the Raspberry Pi into that and that's what this device from Grandstream will do it will you just plug it into the POTS port or the the telephone port of the device from your phone provider and then you can do anything you want to to a degree with that Raspberry Pi and 3CX and the beauty of it is you don't have to start getting a lot of changes you don't have to look at another provider because another way of doing this is connecting what's called a SIP provider. Again, SIP is session initiated protocol. That's going to be a little more involved, but you don't have to do that right away. You can do it by using the Grandstream adapter and there are others out there, but the Grandstream is the one that I'm, I've decided to go with. And there are two versions of that. I'm getting the one that has FXO and FXX ports on it. That way I can connect to an outside provider 
I can connect to an analog phone. There's there's several verse features that make this really handy. And then there's a simplified version of the Grandstream ATA device that will hook up just a POTS phone. Again, all that's coming in future videos. Today, we're gonna to be working on just getting basic connectivity up and running from your Android or iOS smartphone or tablet. Then we'll be getting to things like voicemail and other features that you typically may not think about, but why depend on your phone service provider to handle your voicemail when you can do it yourself. And that way you've got the voicemail in your own house. If something happens, you can still get to it as long as you've got power and your network's up and running. As with anything involving a Raspberry Pi, we're gonna start from ground level zero and that's getting the SD card prepared with Raspberry Pi OS. I use the OS Lite because with doing something like a PBX, I don't want any overhead out there for the GUI because this is typically for me is going to be run as a headless operation. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I've already got my SD card in there and just got the latest Raspberry Pi OS. So that's May 7th and then we'll click on flash. And then once it's done, we'll go to the next portion. Now that we've got the SD card created with the Raspberry Pi OS, and I'm using the May 7th, 2021 version, I've unplugged it and plugged it back in because we needed to get it remounted because I like to run mine in what's called a headless configuration. So to make that easy, I will just create a file out on a micro SD card called SSH. No extension, nothing needs to go in the file, but for security purposes, they've disabled SSH automatically when you first start up. So we've got that done. We will eject the card. I could just pull the plug, but I'm trying to follow proper procedures. So we'll get this moved to the Raspberry Pi and get it booted up. Now what we want to do is make sure we've got our latest updates. So what we want to do now is get the updates installed. And first we want to make sure that we get the latest files out there that tells us what updates are actually available. And this won't take more than, than just a minute. And with this being the May 7th, 2021 edition, of Raspberry Pi OS, then this should go fairly quick. Now, the next thing we'll do is do an upgrade and make sure you do a dash Y because that's gonna save you from having to do that a little bit later. So we'll get this running and then we'll go on to 3CX. Now, one other thing we wanna do is actually go ahead and change our host name. And the easiest way that I have done is just go into Raspberry Config, Systems, Options, Host Name, and we'll just call this 3CX, especially when you have to go look it up in your DHCP server, whether it's on your internet router or separate item. I'd just rather have that as a part of the process. Now we've got the Raspberry Pi rebooted. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, it's showing its host name that we just changed it to. Now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get the 3CX file downloaded. So we're gonna use something called WGET. If you're not familiar with WGET, think of it as like a text version of a web browser. So we're gonna tell it to go and get the latest Raspberry Pi update and that's already got it done. So now we can go ahead and get the installation started. When you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device, please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen. This will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created. The form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app. And if you're not already using a password manager app, please get one now and get started. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. So what we'll do is do sudo space bash space and the name of the file on. We'll do sudo space bash and the name of the file we just downloaded. So it's d10pi.zip. So we'll hit enter and it will go through unpacking everything and then should start the installation process shortly. Okay, there we go. Now there are two options here and, and if you're not used to working with an IP based PBX, let me help distinguish the difference. This, the SBC stands for Session Border Controller. So if you have an existing 3CX installation and you really don't want to go messing with things in order to get it connected to the outside world or you're changing connectivity options, the Session Border Controller will be the outside interface. As far as you can put this either outside a firewall like, or give it specific rules that allows your SIP provider to talk to it. But what we're going to do is we'll do 3CX. Okay, well now we've got to accept the 3CX license agreement and it's got to go through a little bit more here. Okay, we're going to say from a web browser. So it gives us the IP address there 
and that's an internal address. Now what we've got to go back up here, and this was something that kind of gets buried in what's going on. We need to start the database server. They gave us the command, but what we're going to do is do sudo. Okay, now that's started. So we can go over here. We will do here. We've got the web interface up and running. So now we've got to go get our license. Click on that link. They were nice enough to provide one. Okay, we go verify our email. It will confirm. So we'll copy the key and we'll paste it in here and click next. And we will create the account. Okay, that's public address. That's fine. We're not really going to worry about that at this point. And we're going to be dynamic because I don't have the ISP assigning me a fixed address. And we will just select, all, just keep those all at defaults unless you've got a reason to change it and have your phones, we'll just do local IP, that's fine. And this is where uh, you either want to set up a fixed IP address in your Raspberry Pi or just simply do a DHCP reservation. That will be the easiest way to probably just do a DHCP reservation. That way the only thing you have to deal with is if you do change physical Raspberry Pis, your MAC address is gonna change, but you can easily move the reservation over or just delete it and recreate it against the new MAC address. Now, this is one question you're going to need to think about, and you, you want to make this user friendly, especially for a home environment. So probably for, for me, I'm going to go with the two digit and here's my reasoning behind it. A, it's highly unlikely I'm going to have 99 devices on here. And since my house has two floors, basement can be one, main floor can be two, or main floor can be one, basement can be whatever. There's, and that still allows me 10 devices per floor if I want to lock it to that level. But I want to make this thing as easy to go with. So we'll just go for two digit. And if you want to change it, you see the warning up here, then it cannot be changed later. So this would have to be reinstalled. You just have to see, but especially for a testing environment, I think, you know, a two digit extension is going to be fine. Because again, I don't think you're going to have 99 devices on here. Do the email it's got to have, and we will set it to the proper time zone. Operator extension, uh, we'll just say zero, zero for all inbound. We'll just call it operator and voicemail 99. Okay, that's we can handle that one. Give it an email address and that should make it happy. Okay, now this is where you can protect yourself from some possible toll fraud. So unless you have a reason to call outside North America, North America being should be just US and Canada. That's how most of them will define it. You can enable all these if you want to, but at this point we're going to be doing just North America, and you can always come back and, and make those changes. And we'll do standard English prop sets. We'll just select finish, because that's... Okay, so that's going to go back creating the database and setting everything up. So we should be ready to go here in just a moment. Okay, now this is all information you're going to want to grab. So just copy and paste this into Keep or whatever the system you keep track of kind of stuff, because this is going to be something that will be handy to have. Okay, so we've got that. We'll accept the agreement. Okay, now we'll go to scan QR code. Okay, so that's been provisioned. And we will allow, allow. Hello. 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 Okay, what you couldn't see was when I called the Echo service, because I'm getting HDMI out of the phone, that pretty much shut down any ability to hear the audio. So we've got that up and running. So now we'll switch back over here to Intel NUC. We can click close. And if we go to phones and see this one already says provision, that's the magic sauce right there. And that's extension zero zero. And we first set up the extension and then we will add the extension Galaxy S10, S9. So we'll go Galaxy S9. We'll go back over and see now it's got the QR code. So what we can do is scan QR code and I have to temporarily take my phone off and now we're going to give it a new extension. That and so the configuration is that simple. Now you can do all sorts of things with giving it a unique outbound caller ID. So if you want all your calls to be reflective of the same number, email address, this is pretty much going to be up to you. Phone provisioning. Okay. So it says 3CX app. There are probably are others out there so it gives you the username and password so you can make those changes and it knows the system it's supposed to go to there's really no reason to change any of this so the echo test passed 
So now what we're going to do is we are going to go back to extensions. Let's look at phones and phones. Okay. No. Okay. Phones it up. Okay. So it changed the phone number. So that's how we, we manage that one. Okay. So now we'll go extensions and we'll add and we'll just call this one tablet. Okay. We'll save that information and we'll go tablet and I've got my handy tandy tablet down here. Okay. We'll scan QR code. So you can see the QR code right up here. Yes, I've got allow permission to use that. So it's got that. From the tablet, I will call. And you can see it says answer. Okay, so now, I don't know if you can, let me see if I can turn the audio up to where you can hear it. Okay, so there is an echo. So we've got a connection going on between the two devices. And let me mute so that I don't run myself deaf and we'll go over here and phone so let's see it's just showing both of them up and running we'll turn the volume all the way down so really you've got a system that is you're up and functional you you will get into things later about doing ring groups uh, you know so we've got the extensions we've got operator um, probably should put emails on the others, but I'm just trying to get this up and running so we can see the two phones that are provision and provisions the the magic key right there because this is what has all the information you're going to need for it to talk back and forth with and when we get into some of the the SIP phones later on that's going to be a little more involved and we're going to have some challenges there with getting if it's a wired phone and you're running this wireless then with some things you'll have to think through but this is going to be a multi-part series this was just to get you up and running right now so you can see the potential of what having the 3CX install can do. And this is just the very beginnings of what the potential is for this being for you. It can, it'll help you learn more about PBXs. And if you happen to be that one person in the company is the jack of all trades and they just say they want to go to a new phone system, you've at least got a leg up with knowing how 3CX installs, works, configures. And this is where we got SIP trunks. That's something we're going to get to in a later video. But there's going to be other ways of getting this set up and running. There's all sorts of flexibility here and something that I think you will find is going to be a learning process, but you'll pick up some valuable skills along the way that might just help you get that next job. Or if you're new into the workforce, getting that first job, because having an on-site IP-based PBX is going to be something that more and more companies are going to, and especially a small company, you can do it on a small Raspberry Pi. Is it going to be a screamer? No, but if you got just a few phones and you want something more than just plugging the one into the wall, having the flexibility of doing what you want to around it, then that's certainly should be your choice. Work through what we've gone today. I've got the commands that I've used in the show notes or description to get you up and running to this point. This is basically just an intercom system at this point because we've got no connectivity to the outside world. But you know what? That's something that we're going to fix in a later video. We'll also go into the normally used uh, SIP phones. So you've got some additional things there you can do. Again, there's a lot of feature functionality and I think we're going to both find some surprises along the way that's going to make this very interesting. So start on this project today. I'll have other videos coming out. Hopefully we'll have another one next week. Have fun. I think you're going to enjoy this. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.